Under the hood of the 2021 Ski-Doo Expedition Sport 600 EFI, if your new accessory instructions start with remove the upper bodywork, this is what they mean. Start by opening the left side panel. There are three latches, one at the top, one at the back, and one at the bottom. Open the panel fully and lift it about an inch to detach it from its hinge. Remove the clutch cover by pulling the cotter pin, then pulling the cover away and upwards. Replace the cotter pin so you don't lose it. Oil is down about a quarter tank. Let's fill it up with XPS Full Synthetic 2-Stroke Oil. Just remove the black oil tank cap, pour in the XPS oil until full, then replace the oil tank cap. While we're in the clutch area, we'll loosen the clamp holding the intake to the air box. This is required because the air box is part of the upper bodywork. Don't remove the screw completely, just loosen it generously. Moving to the right side of the machine, we'll open up and remove the right side panel, just like we did with the left panel. We'll check coolant level while we're in here. Next, we remove the windshield by pulling firmly against the six friction fasteners. No screws or bolts hold this on. Open the glove box and remove the two black bolts that hold it down. These bolts are Torx size 25. Now we lift the glove box to free it. Notice the gauge cluster is now free too. This optional glove box has two 12 volt connectors, one for the cell phone heater, one for the USB charger. Push the release tab and separate each from the wiring harness. We remove the gauge cluster wiring by releasing the red locking tab, then firmly pulling the connector away from the gauge cluster. Disconnect the two headlight connectors by pressing the release tab and pulling the connector away from the headlight bucket. Next we remove the airflow sensor connector. I find it easiest to press the release tab with a flathead screwdriver while pulling the connector housing from the air box. Tuck the harness out of the way. We remove the two Torx 25 upper mounting bolts. These were hidden under the gauge cluster. These bolts are silver and do not have a washer. Last two bolts. We remove the two Torx 25 bolts from the hood just below the headlight assembly. These are silver and do have a washer. We should have six bolts in our parts bin now. Two black, two silver, and two silver with washers. We can now remove the upper bodywork. Pull the bodywork towards the front of the sled then lift it off, revealing the inner workings of your skidoo. We can now see the neatly engineered engine bay with access to critical components. The engine is mounted low in the frame to lower the center of gravity, improving handling. This sled is powered by the new for 2021 600 EFI engine, producing 85 horsepower. With the upper body work removed, access to the two spark plugs is straightforward. If you decide to install the optional heated visor plug, once the upper body work is removed, you'll be able to easily install the connector and access the wiring under the console. Unused 12 volt accessory connectors are left connected to a dummy plug under the upper left side of the console. This sled's helmet visor plug is connected to the last available accessory plug, so no connector is currently attached to the dummy plug. Reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Carefully lift the upper bodywork and slide it in place. There are two catches at the front and two at the rear on either side of the fuel tank. Take your time and work the hood until the catches are in place. Don't force it. Fasten the two silver Torx bolts at the top of the upper bodywork. These are the two that will be hidden by the gauge cluster. If you're using an impact driver, don't overdo it. Now we can fasten the two silver bolts with washers towards the front of the hood, one on each side. Reconnect the black connector on the wiring harness to the airflow sensor and the two gray connectors, one to each headlight. 
reconnect the gauge cluster to the wiring harness. Make sure to lock the connector by pushing the red locking tab. Put the gauge cluster roughly in place for now. Make sure no wires are pinched under the cluster or bodywork. Reinstall the glove box. This optional extended glove box requires two 12 volt connections to be reattached for the cell phone heater and USB charger. Here, the glove box and gauge cluster didn't seat properly. Just work the plastic parts to get them properly seated so they look neat and are firmly held in place. Open the glove box and fasten the two black Torx bolts. These are the last bolts left to install. Carefully reinstall your windshield. Hook it to the bodywork at the front, just above the headlights, line up the friction fittings with the rubber grommets, then push the fittings into the rubber grommets on the bodywork. This windshield with side wind deflectors has a total of six fittings. Windshields without side deflectors will have fewer. Reattach the right side access panel by guiding it onto its hinges, closing the panel, then latching all three latches. Before reattaching the left side access panel, tighten the airbox hose clamp just above the clutch that we had loosened earlier. Make sure it's properly seated and secure. Install the clutch cover and cotter pin. Now we can reinstall the left panel access cover by engaging its hinges, sliding it down slightly, and closing it up. Let's put an old phone in the optional glove box extension with heated cell phone holder. The phone is loaded with the Go Snowmobile in Ontario official map app. Just open the glove box, lift the phone holder cover, connect the USB charge cable, and close it up. While we're at it, we'll store the owner's manual, emergency pull start rope, ownership and insurance, and heated visor cable in there. Fully reassembled! Now it's time to install the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs 2021 Seasonal Trail Permit on the windshield. If you're wondering, it didn't quite fit in the lower opening of the windshield support. Lastly, we'll attach the DESS clip, insert the key, pull the kill switch to the run position, turn the key to the run position, and then turn the key to start the engine.